in the headlines. Abductors threatened to marry one of the kidnapped students of College of Health Science and Technologies, Afi in Zamfara, if ransom is not paid. Lawmakers in the lower chamber call for resignation of the National Security Advisor over failure of the nation's security architecture. National leader of APC, Bola Tinubu, says Nigeria needs courageous leader to proffer solutions to the challenges facing the country. Philippine military continues search and rescue efforts as death toll increases after tropical storm Maggie made landfall. Hello, welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Zainab Bella. Hello and welcome. Abductors have contacted one of the mothers of the kidnapped students of College of Health, Science and Technologies, AFA in Zamfara, and threatened to marry her if ransom is not paid. Confirming the incident, the provost of the college, Yusuf Idris, said the incident happened outside the school premises on Wednesday. Five students had been abducted, but one of them is reported to have escaped from the abductors. The report. According to the provost, five female students who stay off campus were abducted by suspected terrorists who invaded their residence in Safi town, adding that one of the students later escaped and is currently in hospital receiving medical attention. The provost said that four of the college students are in the hands of the suspected terrorists. He debunked reports that the college was attacked by the suspected terrorists, emphasizing that the abduction of the affected students occurred outside the college premises. The school did not receive any attack, no attempt. Even this one is a personally rented house in the town. God so kind that uh, we made some release of a paper demarcating certain areas, highlighting certain areas that students should not stay, should not live. Even if they live there, they should vacate. And these are outskirts of the town in which this house is among. The student who escaped the abduction and others who reside in the area where the abduction took place told Trust TV their accounts of the incident. Last night around 2 o'clock in the night, we were sleeping then we had some people hitting our door. Then after we had them hitting our door, they now opened the door and entered because the house has two doors. They entered the first gate and now started hitting the door that will uh, lead them inside the house. When they enter inside the house, they now started hitting other our rooms and asked us to come and open the door for them. The police in Zamfara State also confirmed the Wednesday abduction. Police Public Relations Officer Mohammed Shehu said the police is on the trail of the abductors and pledged to rescue the victims unhurt. Safi local government area of Zamfara State has been witnessing a series of attacks by suspected terrorists in recent times. This led to the closure of National Youth Service Corps Orientation Camp in Safi town. This abduction of the four female students of the College of Science and Technology, Safi, is coming in less than two weeks when the son of the State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs was killed by the terrorists in the headquarters of Safi Local Council. President Mohamed Buhari is currently presiding over the Council of State meeting at the presidential villa in Abuja. The meeting is being attended physically by Vice President Yomir Shibajo, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, National Security Advisor Baba Gana Mongunu, Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, General Yaqub Gowan, Abdul Salami Abubakar, and Good Luck Jonathan are among the former heads of state who are attending physically. Others are attending the meeting virtually from their various locations. State governors in attendance are Hopozo Dima, Kaide Fayemi, Atiku Bagudu of Kebi State, Bello Matawali of Zamfara, Nasu Arifa of Kaduna, among others. Other governors are attending virtually. Now, before the commencement of a meeting, a minute silence was observed in honor of the former head of interim government, Ernest Shonikan, who died on January 11, 2022. This is the fourth time the president who chair the meeting earlier held on October 21st, 2015, September 7th, 2016, and August 2020. The meeting will consider security and economic matters affecting the country. 
Governor Amini Tambul has visited Gidam Maigana community in Dandimai district to condole with the people over the death of their loved ones in a boat accident. He appealed to the people to accept the incident as the will of God and prayed for the repose of the souls of the deceased. The people urged the state government to help them with better boats as well as enact laws and regulations to ensure safety measures were adhered to in a bid to forestall a recurrence of the incident going forward. The boat capsized while conveying 35 passengers over a dam in search of firewood for commercial purposes. 29 persons comprising six boys and 23 women died in the process. Six other passengers are reported to have survived the incident after a search and rescue operation by local divers supported by authorities in the local government. Now, as the killings in the country continue unabated, federal lawmakers in the lower chamber say Nigeria is gradually becoming a failed state. They are calling for the resignation of the National Security Advisor due to failure of the nation's security architecture. The call is coming on the heels of a double attack in Plateau and Benue State where many were killed, schools injured and many homes destroyed within two days. The report. Insecurity and terrorism have been major challenges confronting the Nigerian government in the last few years as the country has witnessed a series of attacks from bandits, terrorists and unknown gunmen. However, the recent killings in a village in Wasi, Plateau and that of Goma local government and Teotu community in Taka in Benue have elicited grave reactions from federal lawmakers in the Green Chamber following motions brought by Honorable Yusuf Gagdi from Plateau and Bem Nzondu from Benue State. The federal lawmakers say attacks like these ones are synonymous with those that take place in a failed state and called for the resignation of the National Security Advisor for his failure to nip the killings in the board. They also called out members of the various House Security Ad Hoc Committees for failing to submit reports that are consistent with the prevailing security situations in the country to the House. They called on the federal government to act decisively to save the country as Nigerians are daily living in fear of possible attacks. Over 1.8 million printed permanent voter cards are now ready for collection by eligible Nigerians as the Independent National Electoral Commission commences the fourth quarter of the continuous voter registration exercise. Chairman of the Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who dropped the figures while unveiling the printed cards at the INEC headquarters of Abuja, also restated the need for political parties to adhere strictly to the electoral timelines. Trust TV, Shafi Suleiman reports. The INEC chairman is given a breakdown of the statistics in terms of the continuous voter registration exercise embarked upon by the commission. He is also outlining the efforts the commission has made to clean up the nation's voter database. According to Professor Yakubu, almost 78% of those captured during the exercise are young persons. Nearly 45% of the 
of the completed registrations nationwide are invalid, rising to as high as 60% or more in some states. This infraction happened in all states of the Federation. No state is immune from it. These invalid registrations will not be included in the register of voters. In our he says the Commission's effort to arrive at a clean voter database is consistently threatened by the antics of multiple registrants. The shocking information is that these persons access the register through fraudulent means suspected to be aided by a compromised staff of the Commission. Sadly, it seems that many registrants, either out of ignorance that they do not need to register if they have done so before, or I believe that our systems will not detect this infraction, have gone out to register again. This is despite repeated warnings by the Commission against this illegal action. Professor Yakubu is assuring Nigerians of a robust and transparent electoral process in addition to enhanced deployment of technology. The INEC chairman is, however, tasking political parties in the country to adhere strictly to electoral timelines and processes in line with the new electoral act so that they will not engage in an exercise in futility. Shapu Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. The national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Tinubu, says Nigeria needs a courageous leader to urgently meet the desire of citizens for drastic solutions to the challenges facing the country. Tinubu also described himself as the most qualified for the position of president in 2023, adding that his aspiration is for a nation that would not be an index of poverty. The presidential aspirant said this at a one-day parlay held for servant speakers and former speakers and deputies held in Lagos with the theme the legislature changing times and Nigeria's democratic journey. Tinubu further described himself as brilliant, courageous and sound enough to know the solutions to Nigeria's problems. Elsewhere, 75,000 families displaced by Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast region have successfully resettled in Gombe State. Governor of the state, Inoue Haya, made this known when he received his counterpart and chairman of Nigeria Governors Forum, Kaede Fayemi, at Government House Gombe last Wednesday. Governor Inwa said the effect of insurgency in the northeast region has left people in the area damaged with devastating livelihood crisis. Governor Kaede Fayemi said his visit to Gombe was to interact with Governor Inwa Yahaya and leaders of the All Progressive Congress APC in the state on pressing national issues. 
the impact. You mentioned it of the insurgency because of displaced persons that came to settle here. We made this place to be home for them. As at the last count, about 75,000 families have been settled in Gombe. I don't think even if an opportunity comes, they will still think of going back because they have resumed their normal lives, they have restored, and they are moving forward. And that is the essence of you know, the Federation, you know, to see that we are our brothers keepers and we go with one another, accommodate one another, and give chance for us to realize our potential to the fullest. That is what we are doing here in Gordia. We are very proud of doing These are very critical times for our country. Uh, our president is doing his best to calm things down. Uh, the economy is not experiencing the best uh, 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 of times. Our security situation continues to be challenging and we are in a period of transition. So we definitely need to find a way not only to continue to do what Mr. President is doing, but to also look for the best way to build on the gains of this administration over the last almost You're watching Trust TV News update coming up. How can a state government struggle to enforce ban on street begging? Stay with us. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency, NOAA. Welcome back. This is Trust TV News Update. Our top stories. Abductors threatened to marry one of the kidnapped students of College of Health Science and Technology, Zafi in Zamfara, if ransom is not paid. Lawmakers in the lower chamber call for resignation of the National Security Advisor over failure of the nation's security architecture. Still ahead, Edo State Government says it will build more facilities for Lassa fever testing as part of efforts to contain the epidemic in the state. The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Obehi Okore, disclosed this while briefing journalists after the weekly Edo State Executive Council meeting chaired by Governor Godwin Obaseki at the Government House in Bini City. Okore said the government is working with the National Center for Disease Control to create additional testing facilities in Edo North, specifically at the Edo State University, Uzairi. He said within the next couple of weeks, two more facilities will be added to the already existing one at the Irwa Specialist Teaching Hospital. Despite the recent ban on street begging by the Kano State Government, authorities are still finding it tough to effect total compliance. In this feature, Trust TV's Idris Jabil reports that thousands of beggars are still roaming the streets of Kano Metropolis. Across many parts of Kano metropolis are women, children, elderly, and the physically challenged. Their aim is to either beg for food or money to buy some. Begging, otherwise known as bara or maula, is a common practice to appeal for help from people and households around neighborhoods, on the streets, popular junctions, and motor parks. Some of these street beggars have no options. Since they do not have even what to eat, they don't have choice rather than to beg on the street so that at least they can get food to eat. But others, there is nothing more than greed. It's just greediness that is pushing them. In Kano, like many other parts of the country, 
the initial focus is not to raise money, but to gain enough food or resources needed for immediate sustenance. Today, street begging has become a professional business, and stopping it is increasingly becoming difficult. On several occasions, I have arrested pregnant women. I have arrested uh, some with even HIV AIDS. Therefore, with this kind of situation, government had to make a stand. We had to make a policy by which all this uh, almagery on the street will be evacuated. Although Kano state government has recently banned street begging, but the number of street beggars, most of whom are women and children, seems to be increasing despite measures said to have been put in place. Kano state government has made adequate arrangement for long concerning this uh, uh, street beggars, especially the physically challenged. We have made arrangements, those of them who have a certificate and we are fortunate enough to go to school, they should take their certificate to their local government chairman and job will be provided for them. Kano State Government had made this announcement repeatedly and it still stands and we are working on it and anybody who provides such document will be provided with a job. Unless government policies are properly implemented, poverty is reduced to the barest minimum, as well as high rate of rural to urban migration is controlled. Street begging may be far from over. It raised your brain. Trust TV News. Kanu. There you go. Now, the 81 Division Nigerian Army military police personnel have arrested over 12 suspected imposters fully dressed in military camouflage uniforms in Lagos and Ogun State. The General Officer Commanding 81 Division Nigerian Army, Major General Umar Thama Musa, while parading the imposters at a press briefing, dispelled the narrative that all illicit acts committed by persons dressed in military uniforms are always military personnel. He noted that person display military items such as belt and stickers on vehicles and driving commercial vehicle in military uniform as well as civil vehicles painted in army color and not usually personnel of the Nigerian army. Musa during the parade of the suspected imposters explained that preliminary investigation revealed that some of the suspects specialize in mounting roadblocks along Aja Road to extort money from motorists as well as indulge in other illegal duties while dressed in Nigerian army camouflage uniforms. He was represented by the Acting Deputy Director, 81 Division Army Public Relations, Major Olani Osoba. About 150 from last year to now. The ones you see, the 12 now, are the ones we are finished investigating. Because before we fought the Nigerian police, we tried to investigate them, to get the sources of the uniforms and who made the ID card for them so that we'll be able to meet the, uh, the issue at the board. Because if we get the sellers or the provider of the uniform, sometimes it goes a long way in preventing people to wear them. So those ones that were handed over, they are with the Nigerian police, and we are waiting for the outcome of, the, of their prosecution. The arrest was made about uh, four months ago, from December to now. Because four were arrested at a particular place, during the conference, I stated it. Two were arrested, then one and individual ones, and that's how we arrested them. Yes, sir. Okay. In, because of where I'm serving, a spare command is far from my house. I use it to enter bus, enter my house because of transport. Where you can. I'm using this word for everybody that claim what they are not doing. They go to go and enter their mind to change their lives. They have been arrested in December of five, which have been seen many things in that place. They have no pain. All those food that is there, they go and change. There's nothing like to be living in fake life. Anybody that living in fake life, you go and change. I see many things. I know that God that wanted to arrest me, that would not make me arrest me. He just uh, my the officer that going because of me. I just do like this for the officer. That's why the officer advised back. It's not, I'm not, I'm an officer being in your job. 
And on the foreign scene, the Philippine military pledged on Thursday to keep up search and rescue efforts after tropical storm Maggie ripped through central areas this week, burying many on the landslide and killing at least 123 people. The city government said in a report 86 of the casualties are in Bebe, the Montinos area prone to landslide in Leyte province where 236 people were also injured. Three others drowned in different provinces while six people are still missing. Mengi is the first cyclone this year to hit the Philippines, an archipelago of more than 7,600 islands that sees an average of 20 tropical storms a year. Mengi, which made landfall on Sunday with sustained winds of up to 65 kilometers per hour and gusts of up to 80 kilometers per hour, has since dissipated. And in sports, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development has appointed former international athlete and now chairman of the Edo State Sports Commission, Yusuf Ali, as the coordinator of Team Nigeria to the 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England. Ali, who was the captain of the Team Nigeria to two consecutive Olympic Games in 1984 and 1988, is expected to bring his experiences as a former athlete and his expertise as an administrator to bear on Nigeria's participation at the Games. He will, in collaboration with the Ministry, coordinate and ensure the success of Team Nigeria by working as a bridge between the athletes, federations and the Ministry, ensuring there is synergy in the team. Nigeria finished in the ninth place at the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast. Australia winning nine gold, nine silver and six bronze medals with her best performance ever was in Victoria, Canada in 1994, where she won 11 gold, 13 silver and 13 bronze medals to finish fourth. And that's it on News Update. I'm Zainab Bala. Thank you so much for your time and company.